Okay, thank you very much for me to be here, and I have something very exciting to share with you. I've been, it gives me life, it gives me energy, in fact, that's the reason I'm going back to Japan in a few weeks. It'll be my sixth trip to meet Mr. Harada and to learn more and more about this concept so I could really bring it correctly to America. I think this is the next level. Lean has swept the country. Six Sigma, of course, has done so well. And I hope that the Harada method will be the next wave. And I hope you all get on the bandwagon. Because what is very unique about this Harada method is that it focuses on people. The Harada method, as we see as I progressed this morning, was picked in Japan as the world's best method to, on day-to-day -day management, the world's best method to manage your skills, you personally, the world's best method for you to manage your people. We, this morning especially, are a group in the quality arena. We're interested in producing quality products. We're interested in producing quality process. To what extent are we interested in making our life experience at work something of high quality and to make the experience of people coming to work something of real high quality? I'm going to ask you to do something at the end of this workshop. I would love you to go to the Gemba. That's an expression that comes from Mr. Ono, who is vice president of production and one of the creators of what we call lean manufacturing or just in time. And what Ono used to do is he would, it's called the Ono Circle, and he would, he would uh, take a piece of chalk and he'd uh, make a circle in the middle of the factory and he would say to the factory manager or the president of the supplier, if you want to work with Toyota, I want you to stand here all day, the whole day. I mean, you can go to the bathroom and you can have lunch, but I want you to stand here and I just want you to look at your factory and I want you to find waste. Just sit and look at waste. And it's funny what you'll be able to see by doing that. I want to challenge you to do the same thing. You go to your factory floor and you draw a circle in a, with white chalk and you just stand it and look and watch people work. And then say to yourself, is there a better way for people to do this job? Now look, we look for the most efficient way to produce the products. We're looking for the most efficient way. But do we have the most efficient and the effective way for people? Are people happy? Are they jumping with joy when they come to work? So we're going to look at what I consider and the Japanese consider is the world's best method to develop people to their highest capability, their, their, their highest talent, and see if I can get you as excited about it as I am. See if I can get my slides to work. That didn't work right away. Okay. This just shows some of the recent books that I have been working on, um, writing on. And my latest venture is I'm writing a book with Takashi Harada. And I'm going to talk about how I discovered him, why his method is uniquely different. And it is uniquely different because his method focuses on the development of people. And, it, he, and, and to get people really excited about their job and to understand that we're going through a tremendous transition in the world. I mean, America was very, very successful from the Ford production system, from the Frederick Taylor simplification of work. I mean, the assembly line was the way that goods and services were produced in the world for over 100 years. But that's changing. We can't survive with people going to the factory doing the same thing over and over again. We can't compete because the labor rate in Japan is what, 30 cents, or China is 30 cents an hour. We can't do work at 30 cents an hour. And I'm going to share with you what I discovered that I think is absolutely brilliant. And I hope that you will jump on the bandwagon with me and you will learn. You will become experts in the Harada method. You will become teachers of the Harada method. That's my goal, is to get you excited today so that you come along with me on this journey. The question I want to ask you to start off with is, what is your favorite day of the week? Now be honest, what's your favorite day of the week? When I do this, I keynote, I keynote a lot of conferences and people of course say Friday. Friday is the best day of the week. And, uh, or Saturday. They love Friday, it's either payday, or they love Friday because the next day is Saturday. 
But why isn't Monday wonderful? Why don't you get up in the Monday morning and think, thanks God, thank God it's Monday. Why don't we love what we do at work? Something's a little bit mixed up here. Do you know, every day should be wonderful. And let's do that. Let's make work a wonderful, joyous experience so that we could really have a lot of fun at work. And we could also be equally or more productive. I'm not saying to be less productive. I want you to get higher quality. I want you to now find a technique that will give you superior quality because now you're going to be focusing on people and people are your most important asset. And they'll give you the quality if we give them the method. We give them the process that they can get excited about work, that they can really begin to believe in themselves. Now, as I said, the Harada method is the world's best technique to develop people to their maximum creative capacity. And I'm going to show you today what's different about it, why, why I think it's so great. I just lost my earpiece. Thank you. I need bigger ears. <laughs> um, about three years ago, I teach at Portland State University and I also teach at uh, Utah State uh, on an irregular basis. I'll be going to Utah State in a few weeks, but I teach every week, literally every week at Portland State University in, in Portland. I teach a course called the Best of Japanese Management. And four students asked to intern with me about three years ago. I had no idea what internship meant. And I said, okay, it sounds good to me. I love, I love to work with young people. And um, they would come over here on a uh, uh, Friday afternoon about 3 or 4 o'clock. And my friend uh, Shigehiro Nakamura would be in Tokyo 8 o'clock in the morning in Japan. And he, uh, he would be on Skype and we would be on Skype. And he started to teach us this map. This is a production technology map that was developed by a group of experts and managers in Japan, a group of about 30 top instructors at Japan Management Association would put together this map. Now, this map is now very prevalent in Japan. It is a fantastic tool. And by the way, if you want a copy of this, you just contact me. Now, I'm very happy to email you a copy of this map. That in itself is a gold mine. What this is, it's a strategy map to be a world-class competitor. So visualize, this is a manufacturing company and we want to be the best in the world producing our product. But you have many different parts of you to be best. Not just one, but everything. So this particular group divided their manufacturing facility into 38 parts. There are 38, uh, if you look at the 38 steps, I don't know if you can see my arrow, as I'm moving it on the screen. These are 38 categories. Category is productivity, it's cost reduction, it's quality, it's development of people, it's, it's, uh, it's maintenance, it's supply chain, it's robotics, etc. It's looking at your manufacturing facility, dividing it into 38 different parts. Okay, the next column, the, the wider column here, is the techniques that are being used in this area that are the best technique techniques in the world. So we looked at the area of quality. We would see listed here, one of the things that it would show, it would show TQ, TQM, Total Quality Management, and it shows Six Sigma as being the, world, the world's best tools or techniques. In the next column, it shows which companies in the world are doing this. So which company is noted for being the best at uh, Six Sigma? Well, at the time this map was produced, a few years ago, it was General Electric. I mean, Welsh got everybody there so excited about Six Sigma. And then, of course, because Welsh did it, GE did it so successfully, other people got on the bandwagon and Six Sigma has just spread all over the world. In the next five columns, it represents the steps that you have to take to get world class. Now, what's the world class goal of quality? Zero defects is one, of the, is one of the things you're looking for. And so the fifth column would say zero defects. And the, and the next the previous four columns would be the steps that you have to take to get to the level of zero defects. You might, as an example, use Dr. Shingo's Pokeyoke system where you would install these very simple devices, very inexpensive devices, so that error cannot happen. Well, 
each week for about a year, Mr. Nakamura was on Skype with me and my students, and he, we would take normally one step, one category each week and talk about it. Then Mr. Nakamura would send me slides. In fact, I have 38 slide sets here, but the unfortunate thing is they're all in Japanese. Maybe I can get one of your companies to invest with me and we can translate them all into English. As we were going down, about the seventh step, six to seven step, is the following. It said, standard manpower. Now, what do we mean by standard manpower? Standard manpower is that the TOTA system said standardization, that there is the best way to do something. There's the absolute best way to do something. And everybody has to follow it. You have no choice. Toyota sets up a standard work, and you have to do it. But one great thing with the Toyota system that I love to teach, I call it quick and easy Kaizen, is that you have to write to improve it. So you must follow the standard, but you can always suggest a better way to improve it. And when you work with your supervisor and their team, if they like your better way, then they implement it, and then the standard is changed. In the next box to the right, it says day-to-day -day management. Day-to-day -day management to develop people to their fullest capability. And then the next box says Takashi Harada. And I didn't know who Takashi Harada was. And Mr. Nakamura was kind enough to send me uh, some videos of, of, uh, of Harada. And then my wife is Japanese. And she went to Amazon Japan and found out that Mr. Harada has written about six or seven books. And we ordered them all. And I was very lucky because three of the four students that were interning with me read Japanese. And so my wife and three of the students started to read Takashi Harada's work, and we all got so excited about him. That what is so unique, what is so powerful, that they consider him being the best technique to develop people. And I hope I can share that with you during this hour. OK, so we started to read about Harada. I got very excited about it. And I picked up the phone, and I called Mr. Harada. Now, I don't speak Japanese, but my wife does. So I spoke, and she translated for me. I got Harada on the phone. I said, Harada, I want to bring your work to America. I told him I brought the work of Shingo and Ono and many of the great Japanese geniuses uh, to the West by publishing their books in English. And Harada was very open and gracious, and he gave me a date. He said, December 15th, you can come and meet me. And I got on an airplane. This is not inexpensive, by the way. And those of you that cry about investing in yourself, <laughs> we, we, maybe we can talk a little bit more about this, but it probably cost me $15,000 to get on an airplane, because I go business class, with my wife to meet Mr. Harada. And I met Mr. Harada, and I said, I want to translate your books and put them into English, because that's what I've done for the last 30 years. And Harada said, no. He said, I want to write a new book. And then you can translate it and put it in English. I said, fantastic. I said, but let me co-author it. There's a funny thing. I wish I said this to Shingo and Ono many years back, that let me co-author your book. Because in a way, what, what, I had to, what I had to go through in translating a Japanese book and rewriting it and editing and putting it into American style, I'm almost just, just like a co-author. And so Mr. Harada has been sending me his book. He sent me about 120 pages but it's now up to 300 pages because I've been teaching this concept in the last three years. Uh, my earpiece keeps popping out. Let's see if I can do this quickly. This is Harada. I'm very excited about him. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him, why it's so exciting. Harada is now a consultant in Japan. He has offices, I think, in Tokyo and Osaka. And these are some of his clients, Kieran Beer, Uniglo, Nomura, and the Mitsubishi Financial. Mr. Harada started off his career as a junior high school track and field coach in the worst city, in the worst school in Osaka. Absolutely in the worst. It was in the slums of Osaka. And he had a, a school with such depressed students. They were all underachievers. None of them believed in themselves. But Mr. Harada would not accept it. And he said, you know, there are track and field coaches in Osaka that every year have a great team. What are they doing? Because they can't go out and draft, they can't go out and draft uh, 
students, they have to take students from their area. Maybe their areas are better than mine, but that's not the reason they have great teams. They're doing something uniquely different. And so what he did is he studied the best teachers, the best coaches around the whole world. He studied the Covey system, Stephen Covey system. He studied everybody and put together this amazing methodology that 13 of his underachievers became number one in their track and field discipline. 13 students won gold medals. That means 13 students were the number one athlete in their discipline, not just in Osaka, but in all of Japan. And the school became number one in track and field in Osaka out of, out of 380 schools. What did Mr. Harada do to motivate a group of people that didn't really believe in themselves, that even the, they were junior high school, most of them never even went to high school, very few rarely ever got into college. And now they're getting scholarships into college. About, um, oh yes, about, in 2002, Mr. Harada left the school system after 20 years and opened a consulting company in Tokyo first, and now he's in Osaka. And since 2002, he's claimed 55,000 people at 280 companies in what we call the Harada Method. The Harada Method focuses on self-reliance. Self-reliance means that you can trust people. They're high character. These people represent your company. Now, what do we do today? Because so many of our people are not considered to be self-reliant. I pick up the phone and I call a large company today. And the first thing I get is we are recording this conversation for quality purposes. For whose quality? Not for me. For the quality, they hope for the quality of the process. Why? Because those people are not properly trained. I just spoke to someone too last Friday and I said, how long are you working in your company? And she says, a year and a half. I said, you're a year and a half and they still have to, they still have to record you for quality purposes. This is silly. What senior executive has his calls recorded for quality purpose? I don't know of any. The, quarter, the Harada method is goal oriented. This is the unique difference. This is why it's the world's best. Because when people come to work, they have a goal. I had 80 students in my class last year, and I said to my all graduate students, and I said, how many of you know exactly what you want to do the rest of your life to be, excite, to, be, to, to, to be excited about? What do you want to do the rest of your life to be successful? How many of you know? Raise your hand. Believe it or not, not a single student raised their hand. Not one. Now, these are graduate students. They're going to graduate, and they really don't know what they want to do. Yes, they want a job, especially in this difficult area, this difficult time that we're going through in this recession. People are very happy just to have a job. And they're, they're thrilled when they get the job. And they'll do whatever you tell them to do. But then they're not excited. The excitement wears away when they get into the day-to-day -day routine that we have to change and we can change. What Harada did in the school system is he got a student to say, I want to throw the javelin. And that student began to study to find out what the best javelin thrower does. How did he get to be a great javelin thrower? And then he sets up a plan. He sets up a process to become great as a javelin thrower. This is the same thing what we want to do with people at work. Let them pick a goal. Let them see. IBM used to do this, by the way. When you used to join IBM years ago, they would say to you, where do you see yourself in 40 years? Where do you see yourself? And then IBM would help you lay out a plan so that you could attain your goal within the company. To me, I want people to pick something in your company that they could be the best in the world at. They can be the best lathe operator. Do you know what I mean? The best machinist, the best programmer. It doesn't matter. I want people to aspire to something that they're going to get excited about. Now, we'll see. This is possible. We want to develop people to their fullest potential and Harada says everybody can be successful. Now, the Harada method does not tell you what to do to be successful. You pick it. But he says if you pick something and you get a strong purpose of why you want to do that, you can be successful in life. You determine and you decide what success is. But we can get you through the patterns. 
we can get you through the obstacles that stand in the way for you to be excited. Now, I just want to mention the difference between a normal corporation and a Harada corporation. A normal co corporation that you work for normally focuses on profits first, then process improvement and maybe quality. And the result is maybe cost reduction and in innovation. The Harada method is different. The Harada method focuses on people develop. Your most important asset is people. Then we should focus on getting people to become at the highest possible skill that they, be can, but they can. And also we focus on team development, that you're part of a team. And then the result is quality, cost reduction, innovation, and process. You'll get the profits that you want by focusing on getting your people to get excited and better at work. If you had a, a company built, filled with high-skilled technicians, you wouldn't be sending your work to Asia. I know you wouldn't. Look at Germany. Germany has a unique educational system that students are still going through six to eight years of apprenticeship. They're becoming high-skilled machinists. And Germany is very, very competitive, making today some of the most important, finest machines in the world. I want to go through quickly. Time does go fast. I want all of you to become a world champion. I want all of you to visit. Okay, I'm not saying that it's different in a sense, but it puts all everything together in a step-by-step -step process for you to focus on you being successful. Yes, self-directed teams are very good. Quality circles are wonderful. But even that, we're only focusing on the process. We're focusing on getting better quality, reducing costs, getting higher profits. We very rarely focus on the person becoming a superhero to themselves. Now, the Harada method is unique because it wants people to pick a goal for themselves. I have a goal for me. My goal is I want to be the best teacher teaching you, teaching managers, how to teach your employees how to be successful in life. I want to teach you how to be successful in life. I want to teach you how to teach your employees how to be successful in life. I love the New York Giants. I hope I don't offend anybody out there. But I've been a Giant fan since I've been five years old. And boy, a couple of weeks ago, I'm sitting here with my grandson and his friends. We're watching the Super Bowl, and we're excited. We're not even playing the game, but we're excited. You know, we can identify with the Giants. And it was a wonderful, thrilling experience. we got to do the same thing when we come to work. We have to identify with the company. we got to be part of the company. we got to be part of the company's success. We have to know how vital we are because we are, whole, so high, we are so high skilled, the company can't exist without us. That's where we want everybody to get. And that's the difference between, I think, the other techniques out there. Those of you that know what an A3 is, A3 is a tool that's used by Toyota to measure the success of your work in relationship to the company. The Harada method is a personal A3 to you to you build yourself every day. It's funny. Yes, of course. I like that. Thank you very much. That's exactly what they did. Benchmarking to people. Thank you. You see, I'm looking for the message. I'm looking for the message to get you excited to do this, to learn about it. It'll take a while for me to get my book out, but I want you to get turned on. I guarantee that if you learn the Harada method and you can become one of my teachers, you'll be successful for the rest of your life just doing this. I wish I was a little bit younger. I mean, I can do anything, but I can't reduce my age. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm going to be 80 years old this summer. I'm going to take my 80th trip to Japan a little bit before I'm 80. The Rada represents a series of steps. You pick a goal. You then have a very deep purpose. Why do you want that goal? Not superficial. And that purpose should be for you, and it should be for your family, it should be for your friends, it should be for the American society. If we don't turn people on in America, Boy, we're in trouble. Look at the way, in the direction we're going. Look at the insanity of our politics. I mean, it's crazy out there. The problem with our educational system. Harada did something wonderful in Japan, too. He's already trained 2,500 teachers on the Harada method. And he doesn't charge the teachers to learn. The teachers come in on a, on a Friday night at 7 o'clock, and they will be taught by Harada from 7 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning. 
I mean, that's amazing dedication that these teachers have to learn the method because Harada wants Japan to be uplifted and he's willing to de devote his time. Okay, the next step. Well, of course, that, that's you. It takes me normally three days to teach it properly, three days to teach it. I run, Harada teaches it in five days. And so I have what's called a three-day program and a five-day program. And I am certifying people in five days that they can go back and teach this process in their company. Or if you're an independent consultant, you can go out and teach it to your clients. It's not complicated, but like anything, it's new. And you have to ingrain that which is new. You have to practice it. You have to learn what it is. You have to know why it's different. You have to practice it. And we have some marvelous forms for you to learn and use. And you analyze yourself. You look at your past success, because I want to repeat my successes. And you look at your past failures because you want to eliminate them. And then there's a whole action plan in the concept. And then what are the routines? What are you going to do to sustain the effort? Because we can get excited and we can call it, you know, flavor of the month because we don't know how to sustain it. Do you know, this is true of so many of the tools out there, including lean. We don't sustain it. But this is built into the rather process of how to sustain it. Uniglow is one of the large, one of the world's uh, largest chain stores. Uniqlo, I don't know, 5,000, 7,000 stores in Japan. Now it's coming to America, the two stores in New York City. And this is a wonderful little story about the store. I like Uniqlo very much. It's like the L.L. Bean in, in Japan. It means you can get really wonderful merchandise at reasonable prices. I love to go to there to get cashmere sweaters. And, and it's right in the Ginza which is the heart of Tokyo. And this is a story about a woman who comes to Uniqlo and she has the baby in her arms and she says to the manager, can I use your telephone? My baby is sick and I want to call a doctor. And the manager says, I'd love to help you. This is a great store, by the way. And he says, I want to help you, but I have a rule book. And the rule book says, I can't give the telephone to a customer. Okay, you're a manager. This is your rule coming from your chairman of the company. What, what would you do? Would you follow the rule and not give her the phone? The manager didn't give her the phone. She left. She was very disheartened. She went next door. They gave her a phone. She called an ambulance, got her baby to the hospital, and then she sat down and wrote a letter to the chairman of the company, which is Misty and I. She wrote a letter to him and she said, how could you do this? You're such a great store. How could you not let me use the phone in an emergency? He was so embarrassed that he picked up the phone and he called Mr. Harada. He said, Mr. Harada, you have to teach my employees self-reliance. Self-reliance is the key. I'm just going to skip this slide and go over. Okay, this is very good. You don't realize how much power you have. The question is, how do we get management to focus on investing in people because they look at people as cause. Look, it's very simple. It, 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 it is a, what do, what, do, what do we call this? It is an ROI, a return on investment. Who gives you what you need? Who gives you the innovation? Who gives you the quality? Who, who can save the company money? Who can make more money for you? It's people, but we don't, develop, we don't invest in these people. And we're losing so much work to, to the Asia and Asia is growing so fast, especially in engineering in, a in Asia. I mean, probably 50% of American engineering schools are filled with people coming over from Asia. Yes, we have problems with senior manager. But what I like about Harada, if you can get your managers to my course, I will teach them how to be better managers. I will teach them how to manage people so that mean people are developing themselves to this fullest capability. The reason I want you to go out and look at the factory floor and look at work, because look at what people are doing. People are capable of doing so much more. People are capable of going to the moon. People are not limited. I mean, we go to the Bible. The Bible says that we are created in the image of the divine. We are unlimited in our capability. It's our system that limits us. That has to change. It has to change or we won't be competitive any, anymore in the world. We can't compete with China with our labor rate. We only compete with China with highly skilled people. So how do you convince managers? Your, your managers, first of all, you have to be convinced. 
you have to recognize the power that you have. The power that you have, if you could learn this, you do it, then you can teach your senior manager. We're always expecting them to do it for us. But if you're convinced, and that takes time, if you're convinced of what the possibilities are, management can't say no to you. Now when you go and say, look, I love this Harada concept, I'd love to get trained, it's going to cost me so many thousand dollars, can I go? And the manager's going to say, of course, no. They always say no. No is the safe way of doing things. No means I'll do whatever I did yesterday, I can do today. And I got by yesterday, I'll get by today. But my father always said no to me. I never remember my father saying yes to me. Always said no. But yet I existed. Somehow I got done what was necessary. And so can you. You can put together a proposal, and if we do this, this is going to represent so much more innovation to our company. This is going to represent keeping our best people. There are so many companies in America today, even though there's so much unemployment, they can't find skilled people. So it's up to you to begin to train people to become high skilled. We'll come back to this because time is running out. I just want to show you the Harada tools. This is not a complicated system. The first thing I'm showing you is a list of 33 words on self-reliance. These are 33 words, like adaptable, you know, like creative, like innovative. And what I ask people is to take this test and score yourself. On a scale of 1 to 10, where are you being adaptable? Where are you are being creative? You know, where are you is being trustworthy or dependable? I ask you to rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. Then I ask you to write um, what are you going to do or what's possible with you to get to 10. So if you feel you're not that uh, adaptable, what can you do to get more adaptable? Think about it and write about it. If you want a copy of this survey, I'm very happy to send it to you. You know, just send me an email. You can send an email to Quality Digest or you can send an email to Bodek, B-O-D-E-K, at pcspress.com. That's Peter Charles Sam Press.com, and I'm very happy to send you a copy of the survey. That's a first step. The next, the next form is called the long-term goal form. This is where you will pick a goal. You will pick a goal of what you want to do to be successful in life. My goal is to be the best teacher of the Harada method. I want to teach you how to be successful in life. I want to teach you how to teach your employees how to be successful in life. Success will come when you pick a goal. What Harada did that is so unique is he took a sports analogy. He was a coach, track and field coach. He took that method which made superheroes out of students and moves it into the workplace. But you have to get buy-in from the, from, the, from the students. You have to get buy-in from the workers. They have to believe that they can be successful in the work. They have to believe that you're willing to train them, help them get trained, just get them started. They'll do the work. The javelin thrower goes to the coach. This is also a coaching system. The coach will help them, but the student has to do the weightlifting. The student has to do the running. The student has to know the style, how to throw the javelin. This is the same thing at work. You turn people on, then they'll find the way that they can be successful. They put into this long-term form their purpose. And then we have a wonderful tool which we call the Open Window 64 when the person develops 64 things, actions, 64 tasks that they have to do uh, to be successful in life. And then we have a call Routine Check. Say, this is what I'm going to do every day to make sure I'm staying on target. And then our daily diary. This is an amazing form that Arata came up with. He studied the Covey techniques, the best techniques in the world. And this is what I do to manage my day every day. I put my tasks on here when I want to do it. I schedule when I'm going to do it. And then at the end of the day, I say, did I do it? And if I didn't do it, why didn't I do it? And what could I do to correct it so tomorrow I will do it? And then if I'm smart enough, I'm going to work with a coach. Because we all need a coach. Tiger, Co Tiger Woods needs a coach. Because he could have used a personal relations coach. That would have been helpful. This is the, you asked a good question. How long does it take to go to getting once you're trained? Of course, it's up to you and how devoted you are. The, the way I've been doing this is I 
trained people for three to five days. I like the five days because I'm certifying them, but you can do it in three days. Then when they go back, because first of all, I only train small groups of people. They go back and they fill out these forms. Then they mail the forms to me. And I'm their coach for the first month. That's part of the deal. If they're going to be certified by me, then they have to fill out these forms and I got a chance to work with them to make sure they're sustaining it. Now, one of my last students, he was a senior manager, by the way, a plant manager, and his first goal, he wants to lose weight. He wants to lose about 70, 80 pounds. And he used the Harada method step by step to try to lose weight. And it'll work for him, but he needs a coach. Because if you don't have a coach, you're going to fall back to your old patterns and habits. But if he respects me and he gives me the opportunity to work with him, I will make sure that he stays in his new direction, that he's establishing new routines and new patterns. I will help him do it. And once he gets in the new patterns, he'll lose weight. It's not that difficult. This is a wonderful technique that we go through step by step with you. Um, okay. I like this too. In November, I was invited to Singapore to keynote a conference by the Singapore Development Board. It was a lot of fun for me. I went to Singapore, a long trip. You know, it took me 17 hours to fly there from Los Angeles to Singapore. But I was lucky because I flew business class and I was able to sleep about nine hours on the plane. And it is the best plane to fly in the world. I haven't found a better one than Singapore Airlines. Now, Singapore in 1959 had a gross domestic product of $400 per person. My, my daughter just joined you. Phyllis, hi. How are you? She lives in, in Fort Myers, Florida. Singapore has a gross, had a gross domestic product of $400 per person. Last year was $60,000. What did they do to go from $400 to $60,000? That represents the second highest country in the world. This is amazing, from one of the poorest countries in the world to the most successful countries in the world. They focused on getting everybody to be self-reliant. They got everybody to, to really build their skills. They might have started off taking you know, inexpensive work, garment work, doing sewing, you know, doing repetitive work. But then they focused on high skill. They didn't want that repetitive work anymore. I went to a visit a company called Yokogawa in Singapore. What an amazing company. No assembly line. You know, no conveyor belt. Everybody in cells. Everybody multi-skilled. It's showing what people are capable of doing. And the result is such a great society. The only problem in Singapore is you can't chew gum. This was the, <laughs> can't throw gum in the street. This was the hotel, brand new hotel. Um, and this was the exhibit hall where I, where I was lecturing in. If you look at the top, that's a swimming pool on top of the hotel. What a fabulous place. Um, I like this. This Lee Kuan Yew was the president, prime minister of Singapore for about 30 years. What an amazing man, what an amazing leader. And he said the new industrial society is giving way to the one based on knowledge. The new divide in the world, what it's going to divide us in the world will be between those with the knowledge and those without. We must learn to be part of the knowledge-based world with the best man and woman for the job, the best man and the woman for the job, the highest skilled person in the job. To survive, we had to be better organized and more efficient and competitive than the rest. That's the key. And if your senior manager doesn't want it, you educate him or you go somewhere else to work. Yes. Okay, we, we want to qualify, of course, we want to quantify this into dollar and cents. I'm giving the example of Arata where these students went from unachievers to 13 gold medals and this school went from the worst out of 380 to the number one school in all of Osaka out of 380 schools and the whole school was uplifted academically. And now we've gone into industry and he, Harada has worked with companies, their profits have doubled from this method. I mean, I wish we had the time, and I would show this if you take my course, about the number of examples of companies that are doing this that are excessive, successful. 
the main, the big thing is you'll be a more capable manager because you will now be focusing on developing people and people will give you the profits that you need. I like this slide in, uh, yes, they're the only prerequisite is just you get excited about your own life, that you want to find a meaningful life, a, a life that it's enriched, that you want to be a better manager of people. You want to manage your life better. Everybody that's taken my course, and I can give you the name and phone number of everyone except one. One man took my first course and he wasn't thrilled. But he's the only one, and he took the first one. I'm getting better and better at each course. And I run this next week. I wish a number of you would join me next week. You can go to my website at uh, pcspress.com, and it'll give you all the details about the event. I'm going to run it again on April 30th to to May 4th. It's going to be at the Marriott Waterfront um, in Portland, in Portland, Oregon. And it's a beautiful, the weather's very nice out here, by the way, at this time of the year. Let's see. Let's go to my next slide. Dirk. Let's see if I can get my next slide here. Oh, I, I love this. This is outside the bathroom at the Singapore airport. Good morning, please raid our toilet. I never saw this anywhere in the world. Well, that toilet was spotless. It's not difficult to get high quality. It's funny the way this thing works. Um, I went to Yokogawa, I mentioned. Every worker there is in cells. Every worker is multi-skilled. What a place. What a place to work for people. And of course, they're making very high-end products. They're making control systems for the Airbus. Um, oh, I like this story too. Everybody can be superb in the company. This is just a quick story of, of Kokoyu, a, a stationer, and they've asked everybody in the company, literally everybody, you go out to the stationery stores and you look at our product and see what the customers, how the customers interacting with our product. This particular lady was looking for, for glue. And the clerk said, you know, there are two kinds of glue that we sell. One is a stick and one is a, a glue, okay, and one, one is a liquid. There's a problem with both, he said. I love this, telling the customer there's a problem. There's a problem with the, the, the glue stick because it dries up. There's a problem with the glue because it globbles all over the place. Well, she went back to her company, got together with a study group, told, she told the group about the problem, they came up with a new product. This is a million dollar product that came from one of their average employees. What this is, it looks like scotch tape, but it has little tiny bubbles on it. And when you, when you move the tape across the paper, the bubbles break. So it's a straight line and the glue doesn't go all over the place. It's amazing how creative and great people can be. Harada Method takes a sports analogy. The people pick an activity to excel at. You pick your own goal that is aligned with your vision and your company's success. You develop your own timeline. You create the necessary, go ahead. It's Bodek, B-O-D-E-K. B is in boy, B-O-D is in David, E-K, K is in king, at PCS Press. That's Peter, Charles, Sam, Press, one word, pcspress.com. Um, I want you to determine the real purpose. Why do you want to be successful in life, right? I want you to think in terms of how it's going to benefit yourself becoming a champion, how it's going to benefit your family, and how it's going to benefit others. The greater your purpose, the more important your goal will be to you. If you're serving your family with your goal, you're not going to disappoint them. Also, in the Harada Method, we analyze our past successes we determine our strengths and we want us to, to, to ensure that we repeat them. We look at our past failures to determine our weaknesses and we create ways to eliminate them. You're your own judge. Nobody is judging you in the Harada method. You, we're giving you the steps and then we'll coach you to make sure you're successful. The method works 100%. It doesn't mean everybody's going to be successful because you might not follow the method. But we're saying if you follow the method, you'll be successful. Then you're going to write down 64 tasks. It only takes 32 minutes to do this by 
by the way, in my class. Only 32 minutes. It just pours out of people what they have to do to attain their goal. Then we list 10 daily routines. So we look at our successes to repeat. We look at our failures to make to find new habits. We look at those 33 key words on self-reliance and we see what you want to do to improve and we build them into your daily routines. And then we keep a daily diary. I keep this diary every single day. Every single day. I either update it at the end of the day or the first thing in the morning. It's the first thing I do is to review yesterday, to see the new things that have come to me, to evaluate how successful was I yesterday in what I'm trying to do to attain my goal, to make sure I stay on target. I evaluate my daily performance to make sure that I'm doing what I want to do. And then, of course, in this co co course is to learning how to work with a coach. Harada took us to a company called Chiba Pharmaceuticals in Tokyo. I came there with a study mission. I was with a group from the Shingo Prize, which takes people to Japan on study missions. And we went to Chiba Pharmaceuticals, and we watched a new worker, a woman. She's been there less than a year, and she's a mentee, and she's assigned a mentor. So every new employee has a mentor. She does the Harada tools. And at the end of every day, only for about 10 minutes, she meets with her mentor and she shows the mentor her diary and her notes. Because in the Harada system, we're recommending everybody keep a journal, everybody keep a diary. You're writing, 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 writing. Harada says writing is a very creative process. I don't know any great writer, any great genius that did not keep a journal. So I recommend all of you keep a journal. Well, she keeps her daily journal, journal, she sits with her mentor, and he looks at it, and he says to her, Miyoko, this is really great what you did yesterday, because you have to know how to be a coach. It's not easy to be a coach. It's not easy to criticize people when you're a coach. You have to know how to stroke people. You have to know how to pat them to really encourage them to succeed, to really be a good coach to work on. Summary, the challenge of management is to coach people to be real experts in whatever they do. I'm thrilled with this message and I'm very grateful you're here. This is from one, one person who heard me a few weeks ago and he said the Harada method sounds like the correct combination of tools to turn goals into reality and Norman's energy to continue to share this lean knowledge is inspirational. Thank you, Chris. And R Ryan Allen took my course in January Funny thing is he's coming back again. He's going to sit in with us again because he wants to be a teacher. He is now a lean consultant. He works with his father at this company called Total Systems. Seems like a really dynamic company. If you need a good lean company to work with, you should contact them. Uh, his father worked with Toyota for 10 years. Ryan took the course and he said, my experience with you was so great. As a lean practitioner, we strive for continuous improvement every day in our business and the client's business. The RADA method is the missing link between continuous improvement yourself and your mentees. You know, we talk about continuous improvement, but you do it every day. You need the tool to continuously improve every day. It's a comprehensive system which allows oneself to take an honest assessment of, of their life and strive for excellence as well as fulfillment of dreams. Norman's approach is accessible and well-suited to individuals of all learning styles. This is a course well worth the time and investment with returns far beyond what one would have previously thought possible. Thank you, Norman and Will, for a wonderful experience that has forever changed my approach to developing myself and truly defined my purpose in life. I thank you both, Chris and Ryan, for your endorsements. I have upcoming workshops. You know, it's really funny. It's, it's a difficult concept. I want to share everything with you. But people don't like when I sell. Even though you come for free, you don't want to be sold. You know, you put on the TV and you're bombarded with ads. I wish I knew another way to excite people. I will have the book out, but you might have to wait six months for it. And then it's very difficult. Even though I give everything in the book, it's still very difficult to apply things from a book. We somehow, as human beings, have to take a course so that we can begin to practice 
and get rid of our resistance to change. Well, I surely enjoyed this, enjoyed this hour with you. Go ahead. Well, it is. It is. It is and it, yes. Yes, it is. Because Harada recognizes that the individual has to be successful if the company is going to be successful in the future. Of course, do you know, he was a track and field coach, so most of what he was teaching was individuals to be superstars. But they're also part of teams. I mean, I look, go back to the New York Giants, they, they, and I wasn't so happy with their coach, but he coached a great, a really great game. What I wasn't happy about is in previous games, he always had these runners, like the San Francisco game. San Francisco had the best line. How do you run through that line? You can't do it. You've got to throw until you loosen up the line. So I wasn't happy with Coughlin, but he coached a brilliant, brilliant Super Bowl game. And he's a great coach because he doesn't beat people up. Do you know what I mean? He's there to stroke them. He's there to pat them on the back. He's really to help them to develop the skill. But the reason the Giants won is because everybody in every position was great. Not just the quarterback. Everyone has to be great if the team goes. The same thing with your company. If we can get you to understand this concept, you get everybody great, you'll have a great company. Let's see. It's Bodek. Bodek at PCSPress.com. Either way, they'll send questions to you or send questions to me to, at bodick at pcspress.com. And you could call me. My phone number is 360-737-1883. 360-737-1883. Please do call me. Love to talk to you. Dirk, you're a great host. And I thank you so much for having me. And Jeff came down from Seattle last night to, to make sure that everything was done right. Oh, there's the last slide. You can go to my website at PCS Press. Just put in pcspress.com. You don't have to worry about the business catalyst. Just pcspress.com, and it'll give you all details about the course. I hope you'll all come and join me. Thank you so much for giving me your time, and I hope you feel it's worth it. Thank you, Dirk.